Ms. Rogers. Okay, whenever you're ready. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Well, welcome to What's Going On with Lady D today. We're live here at the Teen Summit at the main library downtown Cleveland and with the Students of Promise. We are so honored and so blessed to have a wonderful young lady here by the name of Julia Rogers. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's a blessing to be here. How are you doing today, ma'am? I am blessed because of the Lord. It's so good to me. I'm 77 years old now. That is truly <laughs> amazing. Yes, it is. Tell our listeners that do not know anything about you because you are truly history. Mm-hmm. Well, um, it started with, you know, the bar carts down in Alabama. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Born and raised in Marion, Alabama. Okay. And my parents are from Marion, Alabama. And uh, when we were going to school and everything, we had all the things that were against, let's say, our black people and everything. And we did not go to school with the white kids. So they had a school for us and a school for them. Okay. But we had good teachers that was animated by letting us know that we are somebody. Yes. And, and, and so with that, we... Um, we just did what we had to do. We just began to read, study, and learn so much and everything. And then when Dr. King came and we joined his organization, I joined when I was 13. Okay. And some of my classmates, we all got together, and we decided that we was going to be in it. <laughs> be a part of the change and everything because we were just tired of just a lot of things that were going on okay. there in Birmingham and then all around in Alabama and Mississippi and all the different places. So we decided that we would go to the meetings and we met Dr. King and we were just, I said, flabbergasted. Yeah. <laughs> and we did that and we, we began to come to the meetings and met Coretta and everything. His wife, she was teaching the young ladies, and she would say, y'all are princesses. So don't let nobody tell you that you're not. Right. So you're somebody, you're queens, you know. And uh, so we, you know, she said, you dress like it, you act like it, because that's who you are and everything. She said, that's what God created you to be. And she just encouraged us to do and everything. And so a lot of them just come with just anything on, but just seeing them, they start dressing up, you know, <laughs> and everything. Everybody looks at me now sometimes. So you always dressed up. You got, honey, it's in me now. So it's going to stay there. <laughs> right, right, right. So that's why how we got involved with Dr. King and uh, Julian Bond, first we met the, uh, we was with Shuttleworth, which was the Southern Christian Movement. Okay. And then when Dr. King came to Birmingham, and we, they changed it over and made it just the Civil Rights Movement and everything. So we did that, and we went to classes and learned how to, you know, to completely, uh, you say, uh, learn more and more. Of, what, of our tempers and how to control them, no matter what somebody said, we didn't worry about or what they did, we didn't try to fight them or nothing like this, so we learned that, you know, like he said, black, uh, violence pre-create, creates violence, so that's what Dr. King would tell us. Okay. So we began to believe that, and we began to act on it, you know, so like I said, we would spit on sometimes, kick, though, you know, a whole bunch of stuff, but we didn't fight back. We just said, smile and said, praise the Lord. Ain't God good? <laughs> oh, wow. That is that is just so amazing because that takes some real inner strength and courage to not fight back when somebody is beating and, and pouring water on you and doing all the horrible things that, you know, we went through. Yes. You know, our ancestors went through to get us to where we are today. And this is very important that our students know about the struggles because what they are enjoying today didn't come to them overnight. That's true. Blood, sweat, and tears went into this. That's why I told them, I said, we didn't have a uh, uh, Burger King have it your way. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I said, we, we lucky we got a cold bologna sandwich, you know, and everything. We couldn't go in the building to get it. We had to go to the back door to and, get the food. You know, I was listening to you speak to the students mm-hmm. And it just appalled me that you said when you were in jail, mm-hmm. they were mixing dog food mm-hmm. yes. and 
to make it look like hash. Mm-hmm. Yes, they did that and tell us it was hash. And I said, no. I said, that's jazz dog food. And so one of the, you know, a couple of kids, they said, no, G. I said, I'm not eating that. I said, because I know what it is. I said, I got a dog at home. I said, right. we got two, two uh, uh, jazz dog food and gravy train was the two major dog foods that they sold back in that time. Right. So the gravy one is that you put the water on it and make the little gravy with the little, you know, meat ball. And so I said, I know the difference. Pay to be that big in there, and you know, and and you know hashing like that. Right. So I told them all. So I finally they began to listen to me and everything. And so everybody said, so one young lady, she says to me, uh, 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 Catherine, she said, Julie, she said, if you don't eat, you'll die. I said, no. I said, my mother raised us in church. I said, the Bible said, we, we know, man should not live by bread alone. Exactly. Like every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Right. I said, I believe that God is watching over us and everything. She said, oh, now you're preaching. I said, no, I'm telling you what I learned right. when my parents trained me. And so when they saw that, they would watch me. And I drank water. Oh, that went so much water you could hear it gushing around <laughs> Well, our bodies are, you know, 90% almost of water anyway. So, really, we can live off of water. Yeah, well, water I, and I keep praying. Uh, two weeks and everything, day and night, when they brought the little food, I will go give me some water. Got the food, I brought some more water. I drink water, I drink water now like that. It's probably eight ounces. I drink more than that. I said, sometimes I drink so much water, I think of the <laughs> <laughs> I said, because it's a habit, I love water. I mean, some water. Sometimes water purifies your body from something. Yes. Things. So um, they began to watch me, and so when they began, they began to do what I was doing. So then, we, but we kept on singing. So that was their problem. They didn't like us singing. Okay. You know, we sang. We weren't gonna let nobody turn us around. You know, and everything, and uh, you know, just sing the songs. We shall overcome. Right. And they didn't like that. So. And here we are today. Mm-hmm. We're still. Trying to overcome. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it is a spiritual mm-hmm. overcomeness yes, that each and every one of us have to go through. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you, give our listeners a word of advice so that maybe we can live as long as you <laughs> or longer because this is just truly amazing for you to have been what you have been through and here today to tell the story because you have a dream. Yeah. My uh, my husband he marched too. He, we've been married 58 years. Okay. <laughs> Got married when we were 18. Okay. And uh, uh, we we just believe. You know, our parents taught us one wife, one husband, and everything. So make sure what you're doing. You know, <laughs> they didn't leave the divorce and stuff. And so um, my thing is, I believe that if you put an effort. To make sure who you are, right, and not try to judge somebody else, right, but look at your own faults and then go to God and ask God, yes, to fix us. Because I said I'm daily repenting to the Lord, asking Him to forgive me, you know, this day and everything, and help me to do better. Because we are, as we live and breathe, we're going to make some mistakes yes. and everything. But the thing is to let God know about it because He's the only one who can fix it. So those are the things I teach my daughter and my sons and my grandbabies and great-grandbabies. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I do thank you for being here today with the Students of Promise mm-hmm. and sharing some wisdom and giving everyone some encouragement words. Yeah. And we honor you today. And I want you to continue fulfilling your dream. Well, I am. I, I, I just do people. I, what I do with people, I, uh, I, I still I carry uh, voter registration things. I okay. Can't come down. Are you a registered voter? Right. You know, and then I, you know, I say, no, why? You know, and I go on to it. <laughs> my hopes and thoughts. Leave these people alone. <laughs> no, we got to continue being an activist. <laughs> it doesn't stop. That's what I told myself. I can't. I said, because we don't come too far yeah. to go backwards. Yes. Don't let the work of others be in vain. Yeah, I lost, I lost a cousin. Um, you might have seen the picture where they did the Selma movie. Right. And they said, Willie, uh, um, Jesse Jackson, uh, that was my cousin on my mother's side of the family. Okay. And I just found out when Coretta Scott died, King, that 
we became folks on my father's side. Wow, <laughs> wow. But uh, I tell him, I said, so you don't ever know who you're connected to. I said, but it doesn't matter. I said, I said, the only thing is make sure you're telling people the truth. Yes. Because in the Selma movie, they had that he um, got shot right. and killed in Selma. He did not. Okay. He got shot and killed in the restaurant. In Marion, the little dance hall where these teenage kids used to go in and everything. And the police did that because they think it was being his mother, not his grandfather. Okay. And so they changed it from his mother to his grandfather. They slapping her around. He came in and wow. he went to work on them for policemen. And he was beating them, so the only way they could do him was to kill him. Wow. And they carried him to Selma, to the county line. The line. Right. Get him there to the hospital and left him in the gurney in the hallway and let him wow. to death. Wow. Well, you've got some history here today. <laughs> and we want to thank you. And now you know this is what's going on. <laughs>